Welcome back to Let's Make a Game, a channel about making computer role-playing games using the free program Twine and the Sugarcube format for Twine. In this video, I would like to show you uh, the progress that I've made in the Mini Rogue adaptation that we've been looking at over the last few videos. Um, this isn't going to involve any new commands or even really any new concepts. Um, it's just an example of how you can apply the things that we've talked about in previous videos to a specific problem. Um, so what I'm going to show you is um, that I've done the coding for the Peaceful Planet card. Um, I've added um, a little bit of code uh, that deals with the end of a area and the beginning of a new area. Um, and I'm also going to show you how the skill checks will work. So let's get up to the Peaceful Planet as, as quickly as we can. So we'll just click through all this. Okay, so, so here we have actual actually let's let's look at what the the planet says when we um, hover over it it says peaceful planet choose one of the following actions practice maneuvers which gives you plus one experience prospect which gives you plus one fuel or repair your ship which gives you plus two hull points so there's three options there uh, but when we choose continue you can only see two. There isn't the one that gives you the option to get plus one fuel. You do have the option that's um, plus one experience and plus two hull, but not the plus one fuel. And the reason for that is because um, in the uh, original rules, there are maximums as well as as well as starting values. There is also maximums, and I've added these to the display. If you look, um, I've got an array. I've already uh, had the array R, which has all the resources, and then there's a corresponding array MA, which stores the maximum values. So force shields can only go as high as five. Uh, sorry, it's hard to highlight just one, got just one bit of text. There we go. Force shields can only go as high as five. Um, hull can only go as high as 20. Your credits can only go as high as 20, um, the fuel can only go as high as 6, and your experience can only go as high as 18. Um, most of those make sense. Remember, of course, that originally this game uh, has a fantasy theme, and your character is a sort of sole adventurer going into a dungeon. So having a maximum amount of money you can have, you could justify that by saying, well, if he has more than that, if the character has more than that, then that's sort of more weight than they can carry. But moving it to science fiction, um, where you are on a spaceship, why is there a maximum credits you can have? Well, it doesn't really, there's not an obvious reason why there's a maximum there. Um, but I want to uh, make a version that, that keeps the rules exactly as written to start with and then sort of and then adapt it. So for now I'm I'm applying that maximum of 20 credits. Um, but those maximums explain why you can't get plus one fuel because you start if you if you've chosen the normal difficulty you start with six fuel uh, in the original rules it's food you start with six and the maximum is six. Um, and that, that is one conversion that does make sense because you'd imagine that however you store the fuel in your spaceship, there's a sort of maximum amount that you can store. But um, uh, what I've done is I've set it up so that if you're at the maximum amount of fuel, you don't have the option to prospect for more fuel. Um, and that is also true for experience and hull points. If your hull points were at the maximum, it wouldn't display that option, and if your experience was at the maximum, it wouldn't display that option. Um, but um, you don't start with them anywhere close to the maximum. So um, the way it works is quite quick. Let's say we want to repair our ship. Okay, we'll click on that, and we'll see that we have 
seven, seven hole out of 20, whereas before we had five. Um, and then if we click to the end, now when we continue, once we get through this card, um, we'll be starting a new, a new sector. Um, there is a rule to do with, in the original rules, to do with eating. Um, you have to eat one fuel, uh, excuse me, in the original rules, at the end of every area, you have to lose one food, and if you don't have any food to use, instead you lose two hit points. Um, the way that I've set it up in this, I've just converted that straight across. You have to consume one fuel, and if you don't have the fuel to consume, you lose two hull points. Um, and that, of course, created a sort of thematic problem, which is, well, why, why does not having fuel make your hull get thinner, um, whereas it makes sense that not eating makes you weaker, but why does, why does running out of fuel um, make your hull go down? Well, I sort of solved it, and I'll, I'll show you that, but anyway, I'll demonstrate what it looks like. We go to the, the planet, and when we're finished, we find ourselves in Sector 2, so all the cards have been reshuffled and relayed out, and we have, we have consumed one one unit of fuel. So that's what it looks like. Let's have a look at the code. So the um, uh, the Peaceful Planet code is fairly straightforward, actually. Um, this is the banner, and the, the, that was there before, but gives you the text. You land on a sparsely settled Peaceful Planet. And there are three options to do with adding experience, gaining fuel, and uh, repairing your ship, gaining hull points. And what if you can't do any of those three? Because the way I've set it up is that if this one, for example, says if dollars R5 is less than dollars MA5, and R is the resource, the current value of the resource, and MA is the maximum value of that resource. So in other words, if resource 5 isn't at its maximum and resource 5 is experience, then we have a button which has the text practice maneuvers bracket plus one experience end bracket, takes you to progress. And you notice that in between the, the button command and the slash button, I've put some code. Um, I probably should have put it on separate lines to make it easier to see, but I didn't. Um, but I'll, I'll do that now to show you. So in, you've got the button, and then you've got this code in the middle, and then slash button. And that code is simply set R5++. In other words, add 1 to the current value of your experience. So if you click that button, it takes you to progress, but it gives you plus one experience. And you don't have that option. Oops. You don't have that option if your experience is already at maximum because it because that but that that line is inside this this if. If R5 is less than MA5, then we have that option. And we have very similar code here. If R4 is less than MA4, then you have the option to prospect for fuel. Um, because you can re um, because you can repair two hull points instead of one, there has to be um, two possible different buttons. So if R2 is equal to the its maximum value minus one, then you get the option to repair your ship and only gain one hull. And if that's not true, and if R2 is less than the maximum minus one, then you get the option to repair your ship and get plus two hull. Um, and so both those buttons will still take you to that progress um, screen, but the code is different. One says set R2 plus plus, and one says set R2 equals R2 plus two. And having that, that one prevents um, prevents you from going over the maximum. If it was just any time it's under the maximum, you get the option to add two. Well, if you're one less than the maximum, um, adding two, of course, would take you over the maximum. So you need to have 
um, the option, but it only gives you plus one. Um, but there's yet another possibility because all of these are only displayed in certain circumstances. Well, what if none of those circumstances apply? You would have a you would have zero options, and essentially the game would end. Well, that's what I've done up here. Oops, sorry, that's didn't mean to move that. I've got this line, and the line says if R5 is equal to MA5 and R4 is equal to MA4 and R2 is equal to MA2. In other words, if all three of these are at their maximum value, then you just get the message. There's nothing you can usefully do here, and so you fly on. And then it gives you a special button, and the button takes you to progress, but doesn't, doesn't give you any um, bonuses. It just takes you straight on. So I did say in the previous uh, video relating to this uh, to this adaptation that all I had to do was add add in the code for these cards and the game would be finished. But um, actually that was wrong because I'd forgotten about um, the requirement to uh, to eat food or or in our adaptation to consume fuel. So what I've done is I've changed the progress. Um, the progress screen. Specifically, I've changed the bit where you go to a new sector. I've made it a new page. Instead of having the code in here, um, I have a separate page called New Sector. And the reason for that is because um, we have to deal with this, this uh, fuel consumption. So we have, if R4 is over 1, which is the, the fuel, in other words, if we've got any fuel, then we set R4 minus minus, in other words, take one away from that. And then we include new sector two, which is this one over here. And if that's not the case, if we've got no fuel, but if R2 is greater than two, in other words, if we've got at least two hull points, then we set R2 equal to R2 minus two. And we have this message, low on fuel, you are forced to jettison some weight from your ship. So that was the best justification I could think of as to why lack of fuel is going to cause you to lose hull points. Um, the the, the, the in-game explanation that I could think of was that um, you have to sort of rejig your ship to allow it to keep flying with, with low fuel, and that involves making the hull weaker. Um, and then if that's not the case, then it, you're out of fuel and there's nothing you can do and you lose the game. But... Um, yeah, so that's the justification. I'm not completely happy with it, but um, that was the best thing I could come up with. Um, and then it just um, gives you a button. This one just takes you there automatically because there's no message. This one gives you the message and then gives you a button to continue, and that takes you to um, New Sector 2. And you can see that I've put New Sector 2 in quotes because it has spaces, and if we don't put those quotes in, um, the code it would misinterpret this. It would it would treat it as if I wanted to just go to a page called new, which of course wouldn't exist, and so that would generate an error. All right. So the other thing that I've done. Oh, that's right. I, I so there was a thin justification that I could come up with for the fuel. Um, there was another rule which I haven't implemented. I don't think I am going to implement because I can't think of a justification, um, and that is to do with levels. Um, like a lot of fantasy type games, your character has levels in Mini Rogue, and your levels depend on how much experience you have. So if you have zero to five experience, you're level one. Um, six to eleven experience, you're level two, um, etc. The maximum is level four, and once you reach uh, level four, they actually call it rank. Once you reach rank four, if you gain any more experience, you don't gain experience, you gain one hit point instead, or one, yeah, well, in, in the original version, it's one hit point. Um, and I couldn't think of a reason why gaining experience would make your hull thicker, so I haven't, um, I haven't implemented that. I've just made the hull points um, a maximum, and, and you can't, if you gain um, hull points that put you over the maximum, then you just don't gain it, you, you don't, Sorry, I misspoke. Um, although what I said was true. I've made experience a maximum, and if you gain more experience, um, 
it, you just lose it. You don't get one hit point in, you know, sort of compensation. Um, because I couldn't think of an in-game justification for it. And so the only other thing I want to tell you about is the skill checks. Um, there's a, a couple of uh, a couple of pages that use skill checks, and so because there's a couple of pages using it, it's best to do it on a separate page and then include that page in the code for the um, for the for the cards that use it, because otherwise you'd have to write the same um, the same code twice. And the way it works is quite simple. We have an array that keeps track of what rank you are based on your experience, which is RA. So it's just a one-dimensional array, and RA10 is how much experience you have when you have 10 experience points. So the first number is zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, or five experience points, you have one, and then six, seven, eight, nine, 10, or 11, you have your rank two, and then your rank three, and then finally rank four. Um, and the um, skill checks are fairly, very straightforward. In the game, in the original game, you roll a normal six-sided dice, and if that is under or equal to your rank, then you succeed in the skill check and otherwise you fail. So remembering that dollars RA is um, what rank a given amount of experience is, what we want to look at is dollars RA square bracket, dollars R square bracket 5, n square bracket, n square bracket, because dollars R5 is your current experience. So for example, if you had 10 experience, we would look at dollars RA 10. Um, so we set z equals random 1 to 6, so that simulates a dice roll. And then if z is less than or equal to um, $RA, $R5, then we give a little message that says that we've done a skill check and you've succeeded. And we set, set z equal to 1. And if that's not the case, then we give a message that says there's been a skill check and you've failed. And we set z equal to 0. And then when the these different pages call upon that, they'll know that if we get a value, if z is equal to 1, then that's, that means the skill check succeeded, and if it's equal to 0, then the skill check failed. Um, that does mean that at the beginning of the game, you only have a 1 in 6 chance of succeeding in skill checks, um, which seems quite harsh. Um, I'd like to playtest the game. When it's finished, I'd like to playtest the game and with a view to looking at whether that Maybe we can up those numbers a little bit, but for now um, we're doing the rules as written as much as as much as possible, with the single exception of that rule about experience. So I just want to sort of get it done with the rules as written, and then we can look at making a making another version. So that is what I have done so far. Um, as I said before, there's no new commands there. Um, it's just an example of how to um, how to use the commands and the techniques that we've talked about so far. So um, hopefully I'll be closer to having finished when, we, um, when I make a new video. Um, but I hope that that was useful or interesting to at least some of you. And I hope you will tune in next time.